Suppose we have been given an arbitrary rigid body which is rotating about z axis. So first of all we have to define the angular position theta. For that what you do, you take an uh, x axis that is ox and take any arbitrary line in the body which I am calling reference line. Now the angle which this reference line is making with this x axis that this angle is theta so this is the angular position. Now if I am taking this angular position this theta in radians then what you can say this theta will be s by r which where s is this distance. So I can write that s is equal to r theta. If I differentiate this s I will get ds by dt is equal to v is equal to r omega. So this equation gives me the magnitude of the tangential velocity. Remember I had uh, written this equation that vp this is the vector equation vp is equal to omega cross rp. So you can see that this equation is also satisfied here. Why? Because if this body is rotating about this omega, this omega is along z axis. So when you take cross product of omega cross rp, you will get v is equal to r omega. Similarly, if you have to find out the average velocity, it will be theta 2 minus theta 1 divided by t2 minus t1 that is delta theta by delta t. And when I take the limiting value of delta t tends to 0, I will get instantaneous angular velocity that is omega is equal to d theta by dt. Now if I have to find out the angular acceleration that will be alpha will be d omega by dt using this formula. You all of you must have seen this formula many times. So this is about angular velocity and angular acceleration. Suppose I have to find out about the linear velocity also this there must be something called linear acceleration also. Now you see what is happening this velocity which has been given now velocity is a vector. So any vector has got two things velocity has got a magnitude and it has got a direction. So I have to find out say acceleration that is acceleration is equal to dv by dt. So basically I have to find out what is the rate of change of velocity. Now this poor guy velocity can change because of both the things. It can change because its direction has changed or it can change because its magnitude has changed. So what happens suppose this magnitude of v is changing that is v is equal to r omega and when will this magnitude change this magnitude will change when this omega will change. So suppose I have been given a body which is the angular velocity is increasing that is there is alpha also. So because of that what will happen this at will be dv by dt will be r times d omega by dt will be at is equal to r alpha. So this tangential acceleration this is happening because my this velocity the tangential velocity is changing. Suppose this velocity was constant then this at will be 0. Very clear. Now come to the second part. Suppose even if this velocity is constant but since this particle is moving in a curved manner it's moving in this direction is changing. So the moment the direction of v is changing acceleration will say that your direction has changed you are a vector so basically you have changed. So this component which is called centripetal acceleration which you would have seen in earlier chapters this will be ac is equal to v square by r or I can write it as equal to r omega square. So this will come into picture this ar because the direction of v is changing from here to here to here. So if a particle is moving such that its velocity is changing that magnitude is also changing and direction is also changing then total acceleration will be a is equal to under root at square plus ar square and why it will be under root this way because this total you see at and ar they are at an angle of 90 degree because this is in tangential direction at and ar is in radial direction so this since this angle is 90 degree i have to find out the magnitude of resultant vector a i can use pythagoras theorem so a will be at square plus ar square so this is the formula for tangential acceleration now you have a set of equations like the equations which we were using for motion in x direction what were the equations for constant acceleration that v is equal to v0 plus at x is minus x0 is equal to v0 t plus half at square 
and v square is equal to v0 plus 2a x minus x0. These are the equations under constant acceleration A. Same equations we can use for angular motion also. Only thing in place of A, what we will write? A will become alpha, V will become omega, X will become theta and V naught will become omega naught. So this will become omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t theta minus theta naught is equal to omega naught t plus half alpha t square and now that we have seen how to denote the angular velocity and angular acceleration so now we will concentrate about the angular motion of a particle or of a rigid body you had seen that when we were dealing with translational motion there was something called momentum similarly for rotational motion there is a quantity a vector quantity called angular momentum and what is this angular momentum this angular momentum is defined as l is equal to r cross p so suppose you have got a particle of mass small m which is moving with well uh, this linear momentum p and the position is r so this angular momentum is defined with respect to a given origin always remember whenever you are given an angular momentum you just ask what is with with respect to what with respect to which origin so suppose i have to calculate this angular momentum with respect to um, this origin o this is the position vector r so angular momentum is defined as l is equal to r cross p that so l is defined as l is equal to r cross p suppose i have been given an ith particle then the angular momentum of that particular ith particle will be li is equal to ri cross pi when i have to find the total angular momentum of the whole body i will do this summation now you see this summation i will use if the, all the particles are discrete that is i have been given these are my particles if this is a continuous body something like say this this is a continuous body then instead of this summation i will use integral sign and then i will use r cross p for a particular particle so that will become r cross v into dm why dm because small element if i am taking the mass of that small element will be dm and the velocity of that particular will be v and r is the position vector of that particular element so this is very simple to how to change from summation to an integral now you see since this is a cross product what i can say the angular momentum of a particle about an axis is a vector perpendicular to both the particle the both r and p because this is cross product so is perpendicular basically to the plane of motion now this plane of motion in this case is xy plane why because my r position vector is also along this xy plane and this p is along this xy plane and suppose the angle is theta then using the rules of vector cross product you can see the magnitude of l will be mvr into sin phi when this angle is phi this is a very simple definition of angular momentum now if i have to find out how to find out the magnitude and direction of angular momentum there are two three methods first method is say uh, l is equal to r cross p i have been given that this is my r this is my p so magnitude by i can write it as rp sin phi this phi is the angle and k because this l will be in z axis because i have taken that my r and p all are lying in this xy plane so l will be in along the z axis so i can I have denoted by k k is an unit vector along z axis so the same thing i can write that okay if i take a r perpendicular here which is called a liver arm also in some books they write it like this so the l z that is a z component of l i can write it as r p sin phi why because this phi is here this pi minus phi will be here so this component will be r perpendicular will be r sin phi similarly i can write lz is equal to rp perpendicular also so this you would have seen in most of the books i don't like this method of calculating l because this sometimes it creates confusion how to calculate r perpendicular or p perpendicular i will concentrate on a second method which is my favorite method this is suppose we have been being given any arbitrary r and i have to find out l is equal to r cross p now any r i can always break this vector r into two component vectors one vector will be perpendicular to p that is r perpendicular and another vector will be 
parallel to P. So I can this is my R. I can write R is equal to R perpendicular plus this R parallel summation. It's very simple. Please concentrate on this method because I will be using most of the time this decomposition of a vector and this is a very very cute method of finding L. So this L will be R cross P. This R I can write as R perpendicular plus R parallel. Then you open this bracket you will get R perpendicular cross P plus R parallel cross P. Now this thing will be 0. This thing will be 0. Why? Because R perpendicular is sorry this R parallel this R is parallel to P. So cross product of two parallel vectors is always 0. Why? Because you take cross product you will get sin theta. So theta will be 0 in case of two parallel or anti-parallel vectors. So I can write L is equal to R perpendicular cross P. So the magnitude now this R perpendicular is perpendicular to P. This is perpendicular to P. So when I find the magnitude sin 90 is 1. So I will get LZ that is the Z component of L because L has to be in Z direction because your R and P are in X, Y direction. So LZ is equal to R perpendicular modulus p so this is a very easy method of finding l similarly instead of if uh, breaking uh, I, in this case i have broken r into two components if i break p into two components say p perpendicular and p parallel i will get this formula but this i am not using most of the time so concentrate on this thing that whenever you have to find l is equal to r cross p break this r into two vectors one vector perpendicular to p another vector parallel to p so this is the second method of finding l this is a very good method i follow this method now third method is using the determinants you would have seen that since l is r cross p cross product of any two vectors can be written in this fashion i j k are unit vectors along the x y j direction so ax a y a z as the component of a vector bx by bz are the components of b vector so using this method also i can find out l and the magnitude of l so let's see some questions on this topic suppose you have been given a particle of mass m which is moving along x axis i have to find out the angular momentum about this point a suppose this is my origin then what will happen what is v v i can write it as vi because this is x axis r a is the position vector of this particle with respect to o that will be xi so when i find out la is equal to it will come i cross i that is zero vector because ra is parallel to v parallel vectors have cross product as zero so la will be zero so this mass m will have zero angular momentum about this point a the same question let's see if i have to find out angular momentum about point B then what will happen in this case now I have to find out angular momentum about point B so I will write LB is equal to MRB cross V now you see the method which I was using right now this RB I can write it as now this is my vector RB so this vector will be sum of this vector plus this vector so when you are writing this I can write RB is equal to this R perpendicular plus r parallel now you see this r parallel this r parallel is parallel to v velocity so their cross product will be zero so whatever contribution for l i will get i will get from this thing only from this side only now suppose this length is l so i will get m l v this is the v and k is the direction of l so what i can get I will get that LB that is the angular momentum about this point B will be MLV and this is the K is the direction. So first of all there are two learning points from this example. Number one learning point is that your angular momentum depends upon the choice of origin. The moment you chose A as your origin you got answer 0. The moment you chose B as your origin you got some particular answer MLV number one learning point number two point is ki this particle you see this is moving in a pretty good straight line this is going just straight 
सो वॉट इट सेज कि इवन फॉर अ पार्टिकल विच इज गोइंग इन अ स्ट्रेट लाइन यू कैन हैव एंगुलर मोमेंटम यू सी विथ कॉन्सेप्ट ऑफ एंगुलर मोमेंटम स्टूडेंट्स थिंग एट ओके समथिंग हैज टू कीप ऑन रोटेटिंग और मूविंग इन अ सर्कल और मूविंग इन एन एलेप्स नो इवन फॉर अ पार्टिकल विच इज मूविंग इन अ स्ट्रेट लाइन यू कैन हैव एंगुलर मोमेंटम प्रोवाइडेड यू आर कैलकुलेटिंग दिस एंगुलर मोमेंटम अबाउट दिस पॉइंट बी विच इज और एनी पॉइंट हियर विच इज ऑफ द एक्सिस मीनिंग विच डज नॉट लाई ऑन दिस एक्सिस और दिस डायरेक्शन ऑफ मोशन सो यू आर हैविंग एल बी विच इज नॉन जीरो नाउ सी द सेम एल बी आई कैन कैलकुलेट यूजिंग अदर मेथड ऑल्सो सो लेट सी आई कैन कैलकुलेट यूजिंग दिस मेथड दैट इज द डिटर्मिनेंट मेथड एट आर बी इज इक्वल टू एक्स आई माइनस एल जे दिस वेक्टर आई कैन राइट बिकॉज दिस इज एक्स दिस इज एल सो दिस आर बी वेक्टर विल बी एक्स आई माइनस एल जे नाउ दिस एल बी विल बी क्रॉस प्रोडक्ट ऑफ दिस आर बी क्रॉस वी सो वेन आई राइट इट इन डिटर्मिनेंट फॉर्म आई विल गेट दिस एक्स माइनस एल जीरो एंड वी विल बी वी आई प्लस जीरो जीरो सो आई विल गेट एम एल वी क्रॉस के सो आई हैव यूज दिस डिटर्मिनेंट मेथड जस्ट टू शो दैट बोथ द मेथड्स विल गिव यू सेम एनसर सो इधर यू कैन यूज दिस मेथड और यू कैन यूज दिस मेथड